Well, it's not quite what we wanted. Not the Champions League, but the Europa League group stage draw being made today. So let's do it together. Wolves are seeded first for the draw. And as we look at the second seeds and the third seeds as well, I've got to be honest here. I feel pretty confident, regardless of who we get drawn against, we'll probably be favourites. That's the nature of being the third seed. Let's see where we fall. We are in Group H. Oh, a lot of good second seeds, to be fair. I'm hoping to avoid Munch and Gladbach, which just about did. Basel, they were a great record against English sides. Let's draw the third seeds out together, and we have got, can't get Brentford, of course, Levante. And as to the fourth seeds, we'll be taking on, well, Sturm Graz. Basel? Levante, Sturmgratz in Group H. I don't know how to feel about that group. I mean, we're favourites, but could have been easier. It's, it's just we've got an easy group there. But I, I don't think that is an easy group, personally. I, I think that could have been a lot easier based on some of the teams we could have got. Levante, you know, that they're a decent side. They've got some really decent players in their squad. FC Basel, as we know, have a fantastic uh, record against English teams in European competitions. Thankfully, not having these countries loaded is probably what benefits us quite a bit here. And Stern, grass your team. Oh, I think we should be able to get through it. I don't think it's easy, per se, but yeah, I would say we're favourites. Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot, it's episode number 35 and Sarah Turner with two big games, as we face Burnley at home in the Premier League, then Levante away in our Europa League group opener, plus there's been a new Wonder Kid signing for Wolves, a certified one as well, excited to show you. Before you get to all that though, show always be getting on, off camera. So of course in the last episode you saw our opening day defeat at the Etihad Stadium to Manchester City where Ian Robin, uh, sorry Joe Gomez, hard to tell the difference isn't it, scored that insane <laughs> cut through goal uh, from the right and then drilling it in with his left into the bottom corner. Following that three games in the run of camera, all in the Premier League, one win and two draws in what has been a mixed start to the campaign. Uh, we have a 4-0 victory at home to Everton in our first game at Molyneux this season. Uh, we saw Trin Cow score our first goal heading in a War Prowse free kick and really it was the JWP show in this game. He then scored a beauty himself with six minutes to go for the break. Then he sort of caused our third goal. His corner headed off the post by Jota and Silva turned in from close range. And then he set up the fourth goal for his second assist in the game, directly involved in all four of our goals. JWP, man, he is so good from set ball, uh, set piece situations, man. He ran the show in this one in a 4 0 victory. Uh, following that goal to throw away against Spurs uh, in North London against the side that pipped us to fourth place last season. And following that, goodness gracious me, 3 3 draw away at St James Park against Newcastle in the North East. Now, I mentioned in the last episode, we conceded that late goal to Man City. Is it just me or are late goals in this year's FM like ridiculously common? And don't get me wrong, late goals are a part of football. It's one of the reasons we love the sport so much. It's so dramatic. But I feel like in this year's FM, they're just they're just a bit too common. Wilson gave the Magpies the lead. Jota leveled. And with 40 minutes to go, so Maximin puts the host back in front. And then the chaos. Four goals, sorry, three goals in five minutes. Big Chris heading in a free kick, firing in the level. A 2-2. Then Traore makes it 3-2. And we're in front for the first time with 93 minutes into the game, I'm thinking surely the rest going to blow for full time directly from kickoff, but instead the game carried on, it was still 3-2, and Nebrecci Eze, the former Crystal Palace and QPR man, like a minute later makes it 3-3, three, three. three goals in five minutes, just a ludicrous end to the game in a six goal thriller there at St James's Park. So yeah, because of the run off camera, as you can see, we currently sit in mid table right now, 12th place. So we do have the game in hand and the vast majority of the teams. A win will put us one point behind Leicester in that seventh and final Euro uh, European spot. So not a great start for Wolves, but it's very early days. You, you can never really, you know, tell how the table is going to finish this early on into the season. Plenty of the campaign left to go. And I know you're waiting for it. Let me show you what happened on transfer deadline day. A couple of moves. Uh, sold all our young players to Leeds United. One of those percentage of next sale clauses. So totally fine with that. Uh, Connor Ronan. You might know about this guy. Uh, Fruity Wolves Academy, I believe, wasn't he? Nope. Signed early, though. Very early uh, from Rochdale. He is homegrown and trained by the club. We've been loaning him out over the past few years. And Celtic put a bit of £10 million pounds in for the guy. Guy. He was in the final year of his contract. There is an optional one year extension on it, but I thought, Do you know what, this guy, like as a squad player, he could come in quite handy. But we've we've got a lot of depth, and I thought for ten mil, I'd rather have the cash to be honest and let him go up to Scotland. And uh, we replaced.
replaced him, when I say replaced him, we, we reinvested that money in a certified wonder kid. Yes, on transfer deadline day. Welcome to Molyneux. Samira Mohamed Keita. Finally, I've got a certified wonder kid in my team. Question is, where the hell do I play this guy, man? Seriously. Now, we signed him from KAA again for 17.5 mil. There was big interest for Atletico Madrid and Liverpool. Thankfully, they didn't put bids in, so we managed to snap him up on deadline day. There's no percentage of next sale clause. There's no minimum fee release clause. It's just a straight five-year contract on 55 grand a week. It's a lot for an 18-year-old, but again, the benefit to this guy is that he will become homegrown and trained by the club if we don't loan him out during the next three years. And again, I really don't know where this guy should be playing. Now, personally, I would say left back slash left wing back. That's just my opinion. Now, he is an accomplished, sorry, left wing back, but not actually as a left back. That's makeshift because I'm currently training him to play there um, as a left back. Because to me, I, I always feel like if you can be one of these two, then you should be able to be one of these two as well. But uh, yeah, left wing back, uh, sorry, left back is where I'm training him right now. And again, I think that is where he will be at his best. Um, you know, when going forward, he's, he's got a bit of pace, though he's not lightning mentally he's very solid all across the board and technically as well 17 passing jumps out of you there with 16 technique as well but 11 crossing 10 dribbling I mean he's just it's just really weird like I really don't know where this guy should be playing again naturally it seems like through the middle with the great passing he's got and the great teamwork as well and a decent vision too you might think that's where he should be playing but to me with with so many great cms in this team already i don't think he's going to get a game here i really don't whereas left back is a backup for right nuri i think he's got more chance of getting regular game time to develop his skills i i just i, I, I don't know do i play him right back you know long-term successor for nelson Semedo, train the weak foot up i really don't know at this point i guess we'll find out over the course of the season so yeah heading into the first game it is indeed burnley uh home of course last season had a great campaign finishing seventh place and if the only reason burnley did not qualify for the europa conference league this year is because brentford beat us in the fa cup final so they'll be looking for revenge if you will because of that uh, right now ninja point just a one player down that's morton forsby club captain pulled his groin in training probably won't see him in today's episode so this will be our team. We've got Patricia in goal. Bat four is the regular. I like Nuri, Eric, Big Chris, and Samedo with Nevers and War Prowse. Also carrying a slight knock through the middle. Traore and Nato, the inside forwards, and Buendia supports Fabio still with just a one goal to start the campaign off, leading the line. On the bench, Bettinelli, McTominay, Williams, uh, Jordal, Trincao, Jota, and Jimenez as well. First to two, it's Burnley at home. Really need just our second win this season. Come on, Wolves. Yeah, that's been a tough start to the season. But again, I predicted this. I predicted this. You know, a very tough first three games. Everton and then Spurs and Man City both away. As Dwight McNeil really should have hit the target there and blazed away off target. And then going away to St. James's Park. And then Burnley, who last season finished in seventh for one of the informed teams in the division. I, I thought it would be a tough start to the campaign, so I'm not surprised by this. Once we get out of this patch, I think then we'll start to kick on. Let's see if we can start it today. Pedro Nato driving forward and shooting and putting it off target. Fast start. So 10 minutes into the game, and this has been a very action-packed start here with Burnley attacking down the right-hand side. Like, Nuri blocks the cross, though, and now Traore has room to gallop down the left-hand side. The fastest player in all the land. And away he goes, steps in from the left. Dale Fry makes the tackle, but Traore picks it back up into Silva. Offloads to War Prowse. Nato beats his man and hits it straight at Nick Pope. Shout to the boys and encourage them from the sidelines. Are you as gutted as I am that Get Creative has been taken out of the game now? That was my favourite shout. I absolutely loved it. It was a bit OP though, let's be honest. It's Burnley swinging the corner. Big Chris heads away. And again, we come on the counter of Buendia down the left-hand side. Seems like we're getting some good chance from counter-attacks here as Buendia looks to beat his man and does. And can he cross? No, shoots from a tight angle. Easy save for Nick Pope. Surely goals in this one. Silva back to War Prowse. Now Nato out wide. And that's a great through ball to Fabio Silva for his second of the year. There it is. Bottom corner past Nick Pope. And he gets his second of the campaign. And, and needed as well. Really, really needed. I'm trusting the kid this year. I'm trusting him. Raul Jimenez is going to be dropped to the bench after three straight golden boots. And Fabio, if you want to keep your place and keep the Mexican sat next to me on the dugout you got to be consistent like Raul is. 1-0 Wolves, Silver with the goal. Yeah, it's been such a tough decision heading into this season. As Eric Bailly's ground was cleared at free kick. Who leads our line? On the opening day, again, it was Jimenez, but I said it last season. Like Fabio Silva is a certified wonder kill, one of the best young strikes in the game. I can't have him sat on the bench season after season as Burnley come down his left-hand side. Cross blocked. War Prowse with a terrible pass, though. Burnley get the chance alive and almost level through Madeiros. What a first half.
There is no way this game finishes 1-0. Absolutely no way this game finishes 1-0. And it's not going to because Burnley have found their level of straight after missing the target. Hilaire with the finish. Great cross by Dwight. 1-1. No, I was on the wall. Just couldn't defend against Newcastle. And uh, unfortunately today we conceded a lot of great chances. And finally at one point Burnley were going to take one. And they have. But we've, do, do, we've been a better team there. So I'll say that at the break. We've been a better team. Keep doing what you're doing and we'll be fine. Defensively looking shaky. But when going forward... We look very good indeed. And again, that's not a real surprise based on how great our attacking pieces are. Get a second goal, which we do through Fabio Silva. And I'll be feeling confident. Great cross, great header, brace of Fabio, 2-1 Wolves. Raul Jimenez got 39 goals last season. 39. So Fabio's got some big shoes to fill. But after a relatively tough start, a brace today. And he's on course for a hat-trick as things stand. Nato back to Buendia. They'll play a couple of one-twos between one another. And now Samedo takes over down the right. Can he cross? He can. Deflected. And there is Silver right on cue for the match ball. Took a few games, but now he's looking back to his best. Come on, Fabio. This is your year, bro. This is your year. You have been waiting very patiently indeed. Now you're getting the chances. Don't stop putting the ball in the back of the net. And Wolves aren't going to do so either. Traore second of the season. 4-1 Wolves. This is what we needed. Big win to get us feeling good again. Free kick. Wolves. JWP so deadly. And oh, yes. Big Chris. Second in two for Big Chris. Heads it in. Back stick. 5-1 Wolves. This is, this is what we needed. Just gets me feeling a bit better than what we've seen <laughs> in recent episodes. Man, oh man, seriously, that collapse at the end of the season, choking the Champions League qualification on the final day. The FA Cup final loss to the championship side Brentford as Dominic Solanke gets after that loose ball and keeps the chance alive. And then, of course, the disappointing opening day defeat with that Iron Robin-esque finish from Joe Gomez. This is, this is more like it, although defensively today, admittedly, if there's one sour note, it's that we've been very shaky. And again, it's goals that win games, but we all know defence wins championships, don't we? Still take it over 5-2 victory. Great to see Fabio still get a hat-trick as well. Delighted with that victory there and back to winning ways. So start the season off, three games away from home, we picked up two points for a possible nine. But at home, we've won both. So possibly a sign of things to come this season. Great at Molyneux, but possibly poor elsewhere. So moving on, Levante away, Europa League group opener in Spain. Aiming to get off to a winning start in this one. And again, the media said this group was easy. Not totally sure I agree with that, but I think we are still favourites to get through, if not top the groups. Heading to the game, uh, I will make a couple of changes to the lineup on the back of the win there uh, against Burnley for fitness reasons, and this will be our true nutrition goal. Uh, Keita is going to start for the first time at left back, and he's not, he's not a left back yet. But he's going to develop quicker there if we play him there and get a match experience there. So Eric Bailly and Big Chris are the CB duo. is always made up right back. Uh, Nevers and Walprouse want to get through the middle. Traore, Trincao, the inside forwards. And Wendy Sports Jimenez now in the team for the hat-trick hero, Fabio Silva. On the bench, Bettinelli, McTominay, Williams, Jordan, Nato, Jota and Fabio as well. Second and final one, Europa League group opener. Let's go after a winning start. Come on, Wolves. I feel like last season, reaching the Champions League semi-final... Only missing out on qualifying again due to a final day defeat to Spurs. Like I, I, I think this competition, it's definitely one we should take seriously because it's a route to the Champions League. You know, like if you win it, you qualify for it. Um, Spurs won the Europa League last year. The year before that, Chelsea won it. So English teams have got a decent record in the Europa League. Why can't we extend that? So first half is going to come 14 minutes in as Neves finds Trincao. And it's a great first touch by Francisco. And away he goes down the right-hand side. A man alone from Barca. Perhaps the former Barca right back, Semedo. And Traore's header takes a deflection and goes in. Sometimes you deserve a bit of luck and we just got some. Lucky goal. First to a minute. Like whenever we get good luck, I'm always the first to a minute. Mainly because when we get bad luck and we get a lot of it, I'm always moaning about it. So, you know, <laughs> when the shoe's on the other foot, you've got to be fair, right? But anyway, Wolves in front and we've been pretty dominant in this first half so far in Spain. Half an hour in. Keep our foot on the gas pedal. I'm pretty sure we'll find that second. Trincao receives the throw. Steps in to shoot. First shot block. When Deer wins it back and Traore fizzes it just wide. We've been in complete control thus far, but as I always say, never feel comfortable only leading by one because you're just a moment of magic or an individual mistake from surrendering the lead and surrendering points. But it's Jimenez. Oh, yeah. Chips the goalkeeper his first of the year. He was stuck on 39 last season. He had opportunities to get 40 in the biggest of games and he just couldn't get there. But this season, that's his first of the year. He's going to struggle to replace Fabio now and get back as our starting striker. 
but a three-time golden boot winner has always got this finish in his locker. Dinks it past the goalkeeper, 2-0 Wolves. I think we'll be okay now. And a third goal will completely confirm it. Trinkau slid through by JWP. Can he cross? No, he hits it off the post. I think was that two or three times. Well, twice. Because the second one deflects and put behind for a corner. This will always be a part of FM. Players shooting from ridiculously tight angles. You can't escape it. The hosts have had nothing, really, in the entire game. So now I've said that. 22 minutes to go. Watch them get a whole host of chances. Get back in the game and then find a last-minute leveller as well. As Ruben Vezo sends it long. And Santa Bria knocks it down. And here come the hosts down this right-hand side with De Frutos. Looking to beat his man. Bai comes across, but a second cross is turned in. Oh my god! <laughs> In for a ridiculous own goal. Which, well, you know, we got a lucky for our first goal. So, what's that old saying? Let's say it together. Luck will balance itself out. But even the bloody 3D took a while to load there because they weren't entirely sure what happened. Cross to the middle. Looked to be cleared off the line by Scott McTominay. And it just hits Big Chris in the back and goes in. Man, oh man. Oh my god. Are you serious? I mean, I don't like to be that guy, but I really do feel harshly done by, by this year's FM. You know, I'd always hold my hands up and admit I'm not a good player at the game. I just play for fun. That's all there is to it. But it is true, man, that there's been something about this year's FM where I have just been incredibly unlucky with goals I've conceded and games I've slipped up in or so on and so forth. And this might well be another one. Unbelievable. Levante got a bit between their teeth now. They've waited a long time to get into the game, and now in a match where we've been dominant, they're now starting to put us under pressure with Morales looking to beat Trincao and Cross. He won't, but Herrero can, which he does, and at the back stick, that's the danger of playing a player that doesn't know how to do that position. Cater switches off, Levante come back from two goals down to level it in five minutes. Well, that is bloody annoying. Look at the stats there, absolutely dominated. Two shots on target, Levante scored two goals, though one of them was just a silly, silly own goal that there's nothing we could do about. And I said this wasn't going to be an easy group. I said it wasn't going to be an easy group. And on the opening day, we were leading by two and looking on course for the win. In the end, we only managed to draw. That is a very frustrating start indeed. But that was this episode of the FM Reboot, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you. Have a fantastic day. I think what we'll do is we'll come out with match day three plus Aston Villa away in a Midlands derby or possibly West Brom at home in Midlands derby. One of the two. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Reboot. Very soon.